we're going to continue working with the login portal that we're building. And we are going to add an image to it, and then we're going to add the two input fields. All right. So we're going to start within this, uh, this area here. All right. So we're working within our card and our card block here. And so we've got some text that uh, Bootstrap threw in here for us. Uh, go ahead and remove that. Now, let me grab the, um, let's see, let me grab the other starter thing here, our example project. So we're going to be adding this image here, and then we're going to be uh, adding these two input fields. So this is kind of a, an example of what it's going to look like for us, okay? So we're going to grab a, um, an image and put it into our project. So come back over to brackets, and right inside this card block, we're, we're just going to add the, uh, the image element here and grab the source. And I have an image already provided for us. It's in assets and uh, the DevSlopes logo. And then remember, I really like to put all my images and logos and things in an asset folder. Uh, that way it keeps everything organized and grouped together for us. So we've got our image added here. And the reason why I'm putting this on a very top level is because when we're working with forms like input fields, those live in a what's called a form group and you always want to keep those type of things in its own element in its own form group and the image is not part of a form group so we want to make sure that this image is not included in it and that it just simply stacks on top of it okay so we've added the image here um, let's go ahead and launch the project again and just kind of check out what this looks like so wow, that is that is awesome. That is a massive logo. <laughs> so you can see that we've got the logo, and it's just you know it's overflowing outside of our card here. Um, I believe this is like a, an 820 by a 515 uh, pixel image here. So we've obviously got to work with the the size here. So let's go ahead and do that. So come back over to brackets and. Uh, Bootstrap has a really cool class um, that we can add to our image. So before we go over to Bootstrap's website, go ahead and add a class to this. And we're going to leave it empty for now. All right, so open up your web browser. And then back in the uh, components here, we're going to go just above that into content. And you can see that it uh, has a, a list of different things we can work with here. And because we're working with an image, we're going to click on images. So in the past, when we were building projects from scratch, we would add a class and add like a max width of like 100%, uh, some of these other things. Uh, Bootstrap actually has something right out of the box uh, to help us create responsive images. And it's a class that they have called Image Fluid. So why don't you go ahead and grab that class and we are going to slap it onto our image here and then come back over to the project and let's see what happened. It, uh, it threw it inside of the, the panel here or the card and it fitted everything really nicely. Now let's inspect the element and understand what this image fluid class is doing for us. So go ahead, right click on the image and click inspect. So we've got the image highlighted here. And this image fluid uh, has some properties of a max width of 100% and a height of auto. So what that's doing for us is instead of the image just grabbing its fixed width and height and overflowing outside of our card element, we are giving it a max width of 100%. So now what it's doing is with this class, it's saying, hey, you have to take up, you can only take up 100% of the element that you live in, all right, of your parent, which is going to be this card block here. So the image fluid now forces our image inside of the card block, which is great, and then it gives it a height of auto, so it really is going to help it resize as the viewport changes sizes. So you can go ahead and close that, and if you want to, for fun, grab the viewport here, you can see how the image uh, changes sizes for us. So that's pretty cool. All right, now let's add a few more things to our image here just to make sure that it's always placed correctly. So go ahead and let's add our own class to this. And let's add sign in image. Okay, go ahead and copy that. Let's dive over into our CSS and create a new class. So I'm going to grab the class by its element, 
and then open this up here and let's take a peek at this again. Um, I want to add some padding to this. It's kind of hugging the edges a little bit close and I, I want to make sure that this image is always centered for us. Okay, so come back to brackets and let's add some padding to this. So I'm going to add uh, a zero padding from the top, a two rem and a two rem. Okay, and remember when I add uh, three values in here, I'm saying that the first one is going to you know target the top because uh, it goes from top right, bottom left. So I'm saying we want zero padding on the top. I want two from the right and from the left, and then two from the bottom, all right? So remember, the, the rem units work like this. So the R stands for root. So we're grabbing the root font size of what the browser by default sets it to. So for an example, browsers by default usually set um, font size to uh, 12 or 16 pixels. And uh, on my browser, it's set to 16 pixels. So what it's doing, or these uh, root units, it's saying, I want you two times larger than the uh, root font of the browser, which will give us uh, 32 and 32 pixels from the bottom, essentially. So that's how uh, rem units work. So we've added some padding here. And let's just check that out, see how it looks. Let me refresh this. So that's looking good. And then I just want to make sure that this image is always centered for us. So we're going to do that with a margin of auto, right? Because when we set a margin of auto, it's going to take any extra space around our element and it's going to distribute it evenly from left to right. And then because I want this, uh, this image to always stack uh, on top of the elements uh, beneath it, which is going to be our input fields, I'm going to give it a display of block. Now remember we added the class of the image fluid, the bootstrap class, which had a uh, display of block on it as well. And in this case, we're specifically targeting just the image and we want to make sure that it has a display of block on it so it stacks properly. All right, so that's great. Everything's looking fantastic. Let's go ahead and head over to Bootstrap's website and grab a form component. So. Uh, go back to your browser here. We're going to dive into components and then come over to forms. Now we simply just want an email and a password input field. Okay, we just need something very, very basic and simple for us. And then we're going to add a placeholder inside of this. All right, so let's, uh, let's explore these uh, form components and see which one is going to work best for us. All right, so that one's a little too complicated. It has too much uh, gnarliness going on in it. And if we scroll down, perfect. This one looks great. We're going to use this one, this uh, form group class. Okay, Very simple for us. It's got some uh, example HTML for us. Go ahead and copy that. And we're going to come to brackets, and we're going to use it. So dive into your HTML file here. And remember, we want the image to stack on top of this form group because the image doesn't need to be a part of it. So right beneath your image, go ahead and paste this form group. And I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And let's, let's dive into this and kind of see what Brackets has provided for us. So we've got our form uh, element here. It's given us a class of form group to keep the input fields uh, contained and together. And then it's added a label for us. The input types are of type text. And then the ID, it's just got this form group example input. And on the second input field, it has form group example input too. Now, remember the IDs in our elements help us interact with these elements through JavaScript. And you never want to leave this uh, default uh, bootstrap text in here. We want to add our own. Now, in this project, we're just building simply the interface of our login portal. We're not doing anything to interact with it, but it is good practice to go ahead and rename uh, these IDs. So this one is going to be our email uh, input field. So I'm just going to put um, email input. And then on this one, I will go ahead and call this the password input. All right. 
All right, so we've gone ahead and we've renamed our IDs, and then we've got these labels in here. And uh, if we check out our example here, we don't have any labels in these. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. So you can go ahead and highlight this and get rid of it. And then go ahead and highlight the other label and delete it. Okay, we'll get rid of that. Perfect. So now um, we've changed the IDs here and let's also take care of the input type. All right, it, it's really important that we're always defining the types of our input fields, whether it's an email, a password, a text file, um, phone numbers, things like that. That way the browser has a much better way of identifying exactly what type of input this input field this is, okay? So this is obviously an email uh, input field, so we're gonna go ahead and type in email. And then the second input field is of type password. Okay, and then we've got our placeholder here. So we do not want example input. Uh, this one's just gonna be email. And then come over to the second input field. And we're gonna change this to password. All right, let's check that out and see what it looks like. Go ahead and refresh. And check that out, we have added two fields. That looks great. Go ahead and right click on this and let's inspect this again. Um, because if you notice, if you check out these input fields, we've got rounded corners. You can see the text inside of it is a little bit more bold. And then we've also got some, uh, some padding around the text. So right out of the box, this bootstrap class just really makes it look nice. So we've got, let's see, this, uh, this input type here of type form control. The class is form control. And let's look how... Uh, this is working here. So we've got a display on, of block so that way they can stack on each other. Um, we're telling it to take up 100% width of the element uh, it lives in, the parent that it lives in, which is the uh, form group. And then we've got a font size. So it's actually setting our font size in here. And you can see that the font size is set to one rem, so one root unit. And by default, my browser set the font at size at 16. Uh, pixels, so that means this one is giving me a font size of 16 pixels. And then it's specifying a line height here for us. And you can see if I uncheck this, you can see how my input fields adjust in size. And with this line height, we're making the input fields a little bit more snug. We've added the uh, color to our font. So, oops, so by default, normally it's black, but they picked this really nice gray color. We've got the backgrounds here, the borders, the, uh, the padding, everything. This thing looks awesome, okay? And then the border radius right here, which adds the, uh, the rounded corners to our input fields. So we know that the input fields, the styling looks fantastic, but we know the size is wrong, all right? It's taken up 100% width now, and we don't want it to work like that. So let's go ahead and uh, come over to brackets and change the width of these. Actually, go over to your HTML first, and let's add our own class uh, to this here. And I'm actually going to take the parent here from the, uh, the form selector here and add our own class, and we'll call this the uh, sign-in form. Okay, And the reason why we're grabbing it from the parent is because I want to control the entire width of the parent and not just each individual input field, right? We're working with the parent here and that's where we want to control the size. So let's dive into our CSS here. And I'm going to grab this by the uh, uh, selector and then our class, sign in form. And then let's give this a maxed width of Let's, uh, let's do 350 pixels, all right? And then that should be good for now. Let's go over to our browser and check that out. Go ahead and refresh it. Awesome, so we've shortened these, that's great. Now uh, we gotta make it uh, centered in its element, right? So let's head over to brackets and get that centered. So go ahead and add a margin auto. And I'm uh, pretty in love with margin auto. It feels like that we use this for everything, right? Because we love our content to be centered. And then pop over to the browser and refresh that. 
and check that out. That looks really good. Everything is centered for us. Now, we've done uh, some good work with our image here, but uh, it's pretty huge still. So let's go ahead and add one more style to our image to help us out. So diving into here, let's go into this uh, margin sign-in. And then let's go ahead and add a width of, so let's add a width of like 70%. Now what this is doing is right now the image, we've got that image fluid on it. So it helps create, take our image, which is 820 by 515 pixels and helps it resize as the viewport changes. Um, but what we're doing here is by adding a width of 70%, we're saying, hey, we want you to be 70% of the size that you actually are. So it's going to help us reduce the size. So come back over here, refresh it, and that has reduced the size of our image, and that looks, uh, that looks pretty good. So that wraps up our video. And to recap, we have added an image to our login portal and some input fields. We have adjusted the size and centered these, uh, these elements here and we're making great progress on this, so let's keep moving forward.